Hi everyone, welcome to episode 97 of the ITSM crowd where our theme is Verism. We're pulling together a few episodes talking about the evolution of service management. So we'll be looking at things like Verism, Siam, how service management's changed, really just looking at the, the things that have happened during the careers of our panellists. Um, and we've, we've got an absolutely belting panel today. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. We'll kick off as always with introductions. So if if I go around on my screen, Johan, I will come to you first to tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, been involved in the, the very some uh, development project. Um, uh, spent most of my day helping organizations build digital age capabilities um, and having fun. <laughs> Sounds like the dream, Suzanne. <laughs> That's a tough one to follow, Johan. Um, <laughs> it's like, gee, having fun. Well, I guess that equates to um, I'm Suzanne Van Hove and uh, newly semi-retired, uh, where I am now working uh, mostly within the international standards community as the convener of uh, JCT1, SE40, WG2. Don't you love acronyms? Um, but this is the, the working group that owns the service management standards. Uh, so ISO 20000 and uh, its associated uh, parts. So I am in Louisville, Kentucky and enjoying uh, the the spring winter that we seem to be having these days. Weather can't make its mind up. Fantastic. Thank you. David. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Barrow. I've been working in an enterprise or IT service management for 29 years now. But for the last seven of those years, I've been working as an independent consultant, working with organizations to help them embed and enable service management across their organization. It was back in 2018 where I saw the, the fruits of the labor of my fellow panelists in terms of um, developing and getting Verisum out there, and, and I grabbed it. So it's, it's really my honor to be here today. Um, hopefully I can add something that um, is, is of news to people. Thank you. And it is an absolute privilege to have you here as well. I've seen you being humble on LinkedIn. It is not called for at all. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, my name's Claire Agata. I'm the host for today's session. I can see we've got a lot of people already watching us live on YouTube. So please do feel free to pop questions into YouTube chat. We can bring them up on screen. If you've got something you want to ask, Johan, Suzanne, David, please do. We can pick it up live during the session. And um, it's, it's always great to have that audience in interaction. So first thing we're going to do is just recap Verism a little bit. And David mentioned 2018, which is just frightening how quickly time goes by. But Suzanne and Johan, I think I'll, I'll, I'll kick off with, with you for this one and just tell people who might not know what Verism is a little bit about the history, where it's come from, what it actually is. Okay, so Johan, how about if I take book one and you take book two, okay? So Verism came about uh, as an alternative, um, uh, not as necessarily as an alternative, but an umbrella-like management model for service management. Um, it, it was in reaction to uh, a lot of us that were involved in the first book saying, hey, this is, we don't consult or help organizations in one uh, management methodology or standard or framework or whatever it is that you want to do. We tend to use a lot of them. And the idea had been percolating around and it finally came out and somebody said, gee whiz, service management should be enterprise wide. We have the perfect time to now uh, address digital transformation. So this was the, the happenings in 2017, 2018, 2016, somewhere in there that all of a sudden everybody's going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what do we do? So Verism was the outcome of that. And, and Verism, not only is it a real word, it, it talks about uh, normal, you know, uh, it's used in art and literature talking about the 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 reality of the situation. So if you're painting a picture, you don't paint a perfect picture, you, you include the warts and everything else. And that's what Verism is about. It's saying, take everything that we have and use what's appropriate for the situation, the client, the organization, whatever it is, so that you can develop and produce the best service experience, not only for the consumer, 
but also for the provider. And as an acronym, Verism is it's talking about being value driven, evolving. Uh, and responsive. And those are three very key words when we start talking about digital transformation and we, we talk about velocity and agility uh, and integrate the various aspects that we know work and have it work in this constantly evolving and um, uh, non-linear progression within IT service delivery. So that's it in a nutshell. There's many parts. I'm sure we'll get to it at some point, but we'll leave it for that for now. So that was the initial book to present the idea. The second book, uh, Johan, will talk about that history really quickly where we actually operationalized it. So Johan, go ahead here. You're on mute, Johan. <laughs> 2022. Oh man, yeah. So the second book was really, at to, we, we started thinking about a more detailed how-to set of guidance. Um, but there were lots of broad themes and topics that the first book talked about, um, and, and it was necessary to, to have a better narrative uh, where we take concepts and put them together. We also realized that if we talk about enterprise service management, the, a lot of focus needs to be placed on um, the leadership of the organization uh, where strategy comes from um, and and then st start weaving this narrative of things that you can do um, because verism is not prescriptive. I always say to people it's a it's awesome broad education because we virtually touch on everything and show it show it in context. Whether you want to use everything, it's entirely up to you. So you know the 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 the, the interesting reading went from, that, incidentally, which is also available in Mandarin, to that, a yeah. <laughs> little bit more, more detail. Um, so, in in hindsight, I suppose some of the challenges with with this how to book is just to to get people to read it <laughs> because it's a lot. <laughs> so I think. Coming back to you again, Johan and Suzanne, because one, one of the when I talk about things like Verism and Siam and ITIL4, one of the questions that people always ask me is like, oh, but what what is it? What's it going to help me do? Why should I learn about this when I've already learned about lots of other things? So what's what's kind of the value case for Verism? Yeah. Go first, Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you. The value case, I think, is the fact that we are non-prescriptive and that we offer a very, very, very simplified operating model that says define your governance, create your operational, your management principles. These are your guidelines, your boundaries of how you want to operate um, and then know what you have as an organization, which is the mesh. But then mm -hmm. the actual doing of service design, development, design, delivery, support, et cetera, is just very simple. Define your service, produce the service, um, provide the service, and then respond to it. We don't care how you do it, but it's around mm -hmm. the, you know, service management. The key word here is management. It's do you have the understanding of your capabilities and how are you effectively and efficiently using them? We have so many choices in, you know, from Idle 4 to COBIT to, um, you know, using SIEM, ISO 20,000, IT for IT, and I can continue the list. But all of these, and I'm going to say loop, uh, group them in one lump sum, have all been developed because people have started to use the previous and then they have found areas that weren't covered. So they developed something else and they've developed mm -hmm. something else. So collectively, all of these framework standards, methodologies, models, whatever are useful, but nobody knows how to put them together. So that's mm -hmm. exactly what we did in Verism and saying with that management mesh, when we're talking about management practices, it says, look at what it is that you're trying to produce and choose the best methodology to produce it that benefits the consumer and the, the the provider it has to be a co-benefit otherwise there's no value when you think mm -hmm. about it um okay so that's my thought johan go ahead top that one <laughs> i just want to add to that for your context 
Yes, um, uh, of course, of course. It, it, so the, there's, there's myriad of things that you can do. But yeah, just think about all of the, the checkpoints on the journey and make sure that you've, you, you've used something to actually get to each one of those. And, and that's what, what I meant when I said, you know, build this narrative. Yeah. So in, in, in my day-to-day -day life, we use a very specific approach, um, but it uses that very same narrative. So it starts with, you know, your strategic direction. You know, uh, we call it, you know, through north. Um, and then slowly but surely we work down this narrative until we're at a point that we say, okay, now you, you, you know, you build, you deliver, you measure, you improve, you know, all of that stuff. And many of these previous sets of guidance um, were very focused on the last mile. Yeah. Even though the guidance may have been, a little bit broader, the way that it's been applied was pretty much the same today mm -hmm. as it was in, in, I don't know, the year 2000. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, if you want, if you want to use the word enterprise, you, you can't talk last mile. Yeah. Enterprise means the whole organization. Yeah. Right from, you know, defining what you are as an organization, conceptualizing how you're going to create value for customers through to everybody's role that they need to play in actually unlocking value for the customer uh, or the consumer. Okay, so we chose the word consumer because, you know, we didn't want to go through this long-winded explanation all the time that, you know, we mean this group of people, yeah? So, you know, are, are you talking about customers or users? Okay, now we're talking about consumers, all of them. <laughs> yeah, and it was it, that was one of the interesting, maybe we'll come to a few more of these, but one of, one of the interesting things was when we were talking about digital products and services, we, we, we use consumers as well because we'll, we'll interact with people who might not even be purchasing our service, but they've got an opinion yeah. about it on social media. So the, the, the customer user thing expands. But I'll bring you in at this point as well, David, because you, as you say, you got involved with, with Verizon in, in 2018, and, and I'd like to hear more about that. But as well, I guess the, the, the journey that we've all been on and, and how that's maybe changed how you've used Verizon, because I sometimes wonder if we were writing the books now, post pandemic would we write something different and in a way i feel not but i'd, I'd like to get your reflections on that as, as a practitioner yeah sure well I, i've told the first part of this story a few times in that i i used to work in outsourcing for the sort of majority of my career and i, I moved out of outsourcing because i felt it was too prescriptive in favor of my employers it, it was less about delivering value for the people that I saw as, as my, I'll use the word customers for now, because I hadn't discovered mm -hmm. Verisim at that point, or users. And I felt it was it was the, the organizations I was working with that were the problem. And so when I found Verisim in 2018, and I've told the story about how I just went and ordered the exam, sat it and failed it, I think I failed it because it wasn't actually just the organizations. It, it was my ways of working. They, uh, Johan made a point earlier. They hadn't really changed since I started mm -hmm. in the industry in 2000. And, and I was I was just focused, blinkered that way. Um, and, and I was trying to answer a set of exam questions like I believe they wanted to be answered rather than actually using my own thoughts. And so I then looked through the materials and, and sat and did Verison. But I think what's what's changed in that time is in that period of 2018, 2019, I'd often be talking to people about Verison for their first time. Mm -hmm. And my career, my trajectory was shifting slightly. I was starting to work uh, with more senior figures in the digital arms of organizations. But then that was leading me almost organically into senior figures to other parts of the organization because I knew in my, in my heart and my head that it needed to be about so much more than IT. But so the, the conversation was their first experience of Verisim. And then in 2020, people started asking me about Verisim. You know, I understand you know a bit about it. Tell us more. What What is the value of the conversation we've just been having? And 
then last year, a real eureka moment for me with my current client, Coninson, is I was having a conversation with the CTO. And he said, this Ferrison, isn't it brilliant? I was like, <laughs> wow, this is great. And then he whipped out the unwrapped and applied book. And there was post-it notes all through it. And he started yeah. talking to me about behaviors about the consumer how we refer to the consumer about to find produce provide and respond he you know this this was job done almost for me i i you know it's not that the job was done but the no longer was i saying this is the benefit of using this approach the benefit of using the approach was already known and therefore that makes my job easier and i think where and i, I go back to your point about would you change it if I was you, absolutely not, because I think some areas that are, are still really great today, just from a, a visualization perspective, is the management mesh. Mm. I think once you get your head around how you can use it, and there are multiple ways of using it, I've discovered it's a really powerful tool, especially over Zoom, um, as much as it is in person. But also, when you put unwrapped and apply together, especially when I started looking for it, there's, there's just sections in there about organizational behavior and characteristics. You put on a page what I was thinking or trying to solidify in my mind about my audience when I go into an organization and gave me some tools to, to then go and actually start to make the difference. And the key tool being, and, and the key phrase that I use all the time, is it's not just about IT. We all have a responsibility for the success of our services. Mm -hmm. um, and only last week, uh, I was in a session where we were discussing customer, user, and I piped in with consumer for the organization that I'm working with, and we're going down that track. And only next week am I looking at the organization, looking at services, and we're using the management mesh. And I think that that just shows, you know, how how useful it is. And I know we're going to get real results out of that. People have, have seen it as part of the prep work and they're, they're kind of excited to understand what this thing is and how we're going to use it. And, and I think that's you know, that that's that's an awesome achievement from your perspective, getting, getting that kind of visualization tool out there. Thank you. So I think go, go on, Johan. I'm going to ask someone to explain the management mesh, but you might be able no, to no, do no. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the three people that spend most probably most of the time um, on Unwrapped and Applied is myself, Suzanne, and, and Claire. But there were other people who did really key contributions. So, David, you, for instance, mentioned the stuff on, on organizational change management, which was written by Karen Ferris. Yeah, and so... Please don't think this is stuff that just came from us. I mean, um, there was a whole community of people who collaborated and helped and 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 disagreed and 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 yeah, reconfigured until we had something that was actually, I think, magic. Yeah, I, I would agree, and and I think the because you mentioned that that things aren't just IT's responsibility, and and for me yeah. that was one of that was one of the biggest discussions that we had with the author group and it, it was it was quite early on but we we kept hitting miscommunication and eventually we realized the problem that we were having was people use it to mean different things and somebody was saying it meaning technology and somebody else was hearing it and thinking the it department and, and understanding that was absolutely massive because it's always been a huge source of frustration to me when we have, you know, the business is here and IT is here. And why? Why is it like that? So in Verizon, when we were defining IT and saying, look, this is a capability, it runs across the organization. It's embedded in everybody's work. You know, if you're in the marketing department, you're probably spending as much money on IT technology as you are somebody who who is actually in the IT department so understanding that distinction for me sort of opens the door to the future of the IT department because if we're able to devolve some of this responsibility for the services across the organization IT then becomes a very different beast as a team or a department because it becomes about governance assurance advice 
looking at security, scalability. And that that's a huge change in thinking. But for digital products and services, it, it's the only possible way to look at it. And if I if I may just add to that, you know, when I talked about the the, the organizational change piece, it something that I've been using is the, the use of practices, communities of practice. Mm -hmm. And they are elements that I took from Verisim around shared goals. You know, Johan spoke earlier about the strategy. So linking those goals to the strategy, but linking everybody to the goals which enable us to deliver the strategy. And through building these communities, which are across organizations, um, they're stimulated by, I, by IT or digital, whatever we're, we're branded as. But but building communities that include business people, leadership, people at all levels, and, and building essentially charters which are, are, are come out of the the um, the mesh in terms of understanding where we are. It's, it's really powerful stuff. And but the, the real key to it is is that you've got everybody in the discussion now. You're you're, you're removing silos. You're you're like you guys said about putting putting the publication together you're you're having disagreements but in a safe space you're you're not challenged by something that's happening on top of you today using those elements and, and then harnessing them is so powerful and it's um it's something i always see enjoying in enjoy watching develop as well because there's there's the there's the silence there's the I'm not quite sure what this is then there's the massive uptake and and then the people that come from behind and then it just becomes behavior is just mm -hmm. normal behavior and it just continues to run and that's great Suzanne I think you were going to say something as well yeah I had to find the unmute button um <laughs> I had the pleasure <laughs> uh, I had the pleasure of delivering uh, a lecture last night to an MBA program here in the United States and it was um service management does it matter and, you know, play on words with the it. Could it be IT? Could it be just doesn't really matter? And um, very interesting. This is one of the top MBA programs in the United States. And so they get the cream of the crop in terms of students. And I have a slide in the presentation. It, it says, is IT solely responsible for services? Mm -hmm. And five years ago, everybody would have said yes. And it was a great pleasure to hear this group of students who some have an IT background. This was an MBA program. Some do not, but it, doing an MBA program with an emphasis in information systems or information technology, something along that line. And they said, well, no, that's a stupid question. And I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is great, you know, because they said it's the entire organization, you know. Yeah. And so here's a group of students and, you know, they're all adults and whatnot, but have been impacted via uh, you know, the digital transformation of the world uh, of going in and, and being able to hold the world in the palm of your hand and saying, wow, services are important. And that, you know, it's not just up to IT. And they were giving me examples of why it wasn't. And I'm like, okay, I'm done talking. I guess I can stop the, the stop the lecture. <laughs> of course, I went, immediately went on another track, but it was a great uh, eye opener that that people are starting to see beyond that that very uh, introductory IT is the orphan child you know sitting mm -hmm. at the, the the kids table you know and begging to be exploited in the strategy of an organization right so um, that was a really nice thing and an outcome uh, of that lecture last night so it is changing it just takes some time and you know that's yeah. the thing with Verism we came in at the very beginning. And it was disruptive. I mean, we disrupted the service management community enough to announce Idle 4. I mean, literally within an hour of us announcing this, Idle 4 came out as a complete surprise and unprepared um, at that conference. So, you know, again, that was a quick disruption and a quick reaction because people mm. know it's valuable and it's needed. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think another example of, of that, that, kind of IT isn't responsible for everything. So from from the the, the COVID files, um, a friend of mine was working on the, the, the vaccine registration system in the UK and how are you going to prove that you were vaccinated. That was the service, was giving people the ability to prove they were vaccinated. And the vast majority of that was digitally enabled. But of course, you have this element of the community that doesn't have an online presence, isn't using apps and smartphones so there has to be that element which is 
offline that's available as well. So there's very much an organization thinking in terms of product and service, thinking from the consumer perspective, massive amount of it is digitally enabled, but the service itself complete has that element that's offline as well. So it, it's never going to be the responsibility of the IT department. Yeah, and I just want to add on this because this was something that you came up with that I thought was absolutely brilliant, was the shift from the project-based thinking to the product-based thinking. You know, getting off the tick in the box, I throw it over the wall and it's like, good luck, go with God, it's yours. You take care of it. <laughs> to now the, 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 the product saying we have to look at it from a life cycle perspective, have the ability to be flexible, to be agile, to pivot, to add, to remove, to do whatever, and look at it from an end-to-end -end consumer perspective. So it's that evolutionary thinking. Um, and you were the first one that said that to me, and I was just like, oh, my God, that's that's exactly it. So, by the way, that was in the presentation last night as well, and people... I would I would like, love to take credit on. for that, but that's, that's come from... <laughs> from the that changed my mind completely, because nothing is ever done when you take that that approach done yeah. is is just we've done what we need to do for now but this this might change in the future and i suspect david that's something that you see with with your clients as well yeah absolutely um but it's when you get them around to that way of thinking that you know every product is a service as opposed to it's just something to hand over to somebody else and, and they'll deal with it um and, and and sometimes i don't think that comes Sometimes it's behaviours, uh, but but a lot of the time it's based on the objectives that people are set, um, and those objectives are very task level, and they're not mm -hmm. actually looking at the, the the business as a whole and the value perspective. And so I often look at organisations or work with organisations and just revisit some of the some of the objectives, and and it's very easy that way because I can just associate them with the strategy and the vision, and. Uh, but the key is is bringing everybody into the conversation and mm -hmm. also enabling those that maybe don't feel like they have input to, to, to have that input, to give them the voice. Yeah. And, and sometimes it just takes a mediator or, or somebody from outside to do that. And But you have to have something that you base the sense on. And so, again, Verisum is something that you can base the sense on. Um, you know, it's got a fountain. Everything in there is sensible. If, if I'm just going in and saying it, I'm just another voice. So I've, that's where I found it to be really powerful. Fantastic. So we're coming to the end of time, but I always like to finish with top tips for people. So I'll come around the three of you and ask you just quickly, what would your top tip be for somebody who's watched this episode? Should they go read something? Should they go do something? What would you advise them to do? So Johan, I'll come to you first. Sure. Um... You know, I'm the controversial one normally. Um, if if you're brave enough, stop funding departments and start funding products. Um, it's a big shift, um, but it's it will enable your organisation to be responsive enough and agile enough um, to meet this ever increasing um, demand from customers for value. Um, so I'll say that's my top tip. Good tip. Thank you. That's Suzanne? a great tip. I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to top that. <laughs> um, but my tip would be this, is that, um, you know, we've done the same thing over and over again because we've always done it that way. And so what we've learned to do is get the same results that we don't want faster and faster. And we become very efficient at failure. Um, it, you know, so when I look at how folks have, you know, utilized the idle training from the previous version to, I don't know what's happening in this version yet, but, you know, everybody started out with operations, you know, incident problem, and then transition with change. And we learned to repeat the same mistakes over and over again and never stop to think about, well, how can we stop the mistakes that we keep making? It took eight mm -hmm. or nine years of the 2011 idle version before people started jumping in the service strategy book. And the answer was there. So what I would give as a top tip is to say, let's take a right-handed pivot or a left-handed pivot, depending on which way you want to go, but pivot <laughs> and look at what you do differently. Be brave enough to say, Instead of it, just putting a Band-Aid on it, let's really look at what's going to stop and make a big change that's going to benefit my, my organization and the, our consumer base. 
Read the books, awesome. by the way. Buy the books and read the books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much. And David, coming to you. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, at the moment, there's a number of companies offering uh, Verison training for free. So my advice would be take the training, but don't stop there. If there's more than one of you in the organization taking the training, discuss what you've learned. Uh, understand how you can apply it and then socialize that in your organization and get as many people as you can to listen to what you're talking about and participate mm -hmm. then apply it but but do it do it in a stepped way and you and use the information as as your sense check as, as the way to move forward and I don't think you'll go too far wrong that makes perfect sense. And yeah, I think if you search the hashtag free verism on LinkedIn or Twitter, then you'll find those companies who are doing free verism training for the next month or so. So definitely worth looking for. So thank you hugely to Johan, to Suzanne, to David. Um, it's been brilliant to just kind of revisit verism almost because it's a little while since we've an episode about it but definitely linking into our evolution of service management theme things are changing companies are changing the world's changing so it's a good time to to look at how we work as well and, and this has been a, a great little recap of that so thank you very much to our panel thank you to everybody who's been watching us live as well and we will see you on the next episode of the itsm crowd thank you very much thank you bye bye